at some point in the last couple of years debated with our friends and our family the state of Europe's economy, massive unemployment and what can be done about it. So this week Real Economy went straight to the power hub of the new European Commission to find out what the plan is to turn things around. On the show, we'll be speaking with the European Commission's Vice President, Jurki Katainen, about the much debated investment plan. How realistic is it and how does he answer critics who question the ability to raise the money in Europe's current state of affairs? And what does he have to say to the SMEs on the ground who desperately need the money to grow and to create jobs? Now, the aim is to raise investment finance, that's private money with no new public debt, by selling bonds for investments in key growth projects while removing barriers. So here's our crash course on how exactly that plan is supposed to work. Think of the EU investment package like a brand new empty safe. First into the safe is a 16 billion euro guarantee from the EU, which should be backed up by about 8 billion of existing funds. Another 5 billion will come from the European Investment Bank, so that makes 21 billion euros from Europe in theory, with possibly more from member states and their banks. The Commission believes it can grow this 21 billion into 315 billion, and this is how. Every one euro of public funds should raise three euros in leverage as what's known as subordinated debt. That means the EU will, as creditors, be the last to be paid back. Private investors would then be incentivized to join the project, taking that three euros to 15. As senior debt holders, they would be the first creditors to be paid back. If successful, 240 billion euros should go to strategic investments and 75 billion to SMEs. Joining us is the Vice President of the European Commission, Jörgi Katainen. The investment plan has been on a roadshow. What kind of reaction have you got from the investment community and how realistic is it? Well, the feedback has been very encouraging, especially uh, those who are supposed to invest in Europe have been very interested in about the new opportunities we are offering. There are ba basically three elements, SME financing and high-risk project financing. The second part is transparent project pipeline. And the third one is deepening of single market in various areas. How quickly will you end up having to knock on the doors of other countries, other parts of the world? We can deliver very fast. So everything should be in place by the end of June. And um, we can start um, increasing SME lending already before that. Once everything is ready, I'm more than happy to, to visit different parts of the world and tell uh, the other people also about the new opportunities. Since we are talking about the real economy, I want to get us down to the ground, to the SMEs that are supposed to benefit and the private investment side. Guillaume Desjardins went down to Spain to get a perspective. Meet Wilbur. He's just one of 7,000 pigs that Yosu Garioldi from the company Bassa Cherry turns into world-famous Basque hams every year. Set up 15 years ago, growing demand is not a problem for the company, but it's access to finance to allow that growth. We have to find new ways of direct marketing integrate ourselves in restaurant chains and butcher shops, look for new products and new markets. If we had available finance, we'd certainly get the opportunity to grow further. Like Yosu's hams, for more than 20 million SMEs in Europe, access to finance has become a difficult road to walk. High unemployment in Spain has made the story here even more critical. 2.25 million SMEs employ more than 7.6 million people. Those numbers pushed the Basque government to set up the technology park long before the crisis. The problem is that during their normal business pursuits, they are too small to gain access to business loans, to the finance they need. In order to help Yosu promote his company, the EU and its investment plan would need to make this one euro into 15 principle work. But are investors ready to be involved? Can they help multiply loads to feed the multitude of hungry SMEs? In a word, can it work? 
Today, there's liquidity in the market. What investors expect are feasible projects to invest in. Therefore, for SMEs with a high level of risk, like startups or new enterprise projects, if the risk is mitigated, there'll be a lot of people ready to invest, me included. I think it's ambitious. Yes, the banking system has money, but what it's lacking now is confidence. That lack of confidence is being addressed in some part by the European Central Bank's QE programme. The effect? In theory, banks can take more risk, give money to SMEs like Yossus, making him as content with growth as Wilbur here is in mud. This is about investor confidence. This is about people having confidence in the euro, in Europe. Do you think it is there enough to raise the kind of money you want to? The situation varies from country to country. And also next year the growth will be even better, around 2%, both in Euro area and in the entire EU area. But of course member states must, must do their share. And they have to keep going in reform part because this is very much uh, needed in order to boost investment. Do you think the ECB's quantitative easing program is making it easier for you to sell the investment plan? It has been very helpful and it has stabilized the situation. If looking at the monetary policy and if you add cheap euro and if you add a cheap oil price, it, they all together create a tremendous stimulus to euro area economy. So now it's up to the governments to do reforms. If looking at Italy, for instance, they have a very ambitious uh, reform plan. Also, uh, Spain, Portugal, uh, Ireland, they are ex extremely good examples that when reforming a society, you can get more jobs. I think a lot of people are very concerned about the vagueness of the situation. What gets sacrificed in terms of the funding that already exists? And specifics on the projects, if you have any. Yeah, well, uh, we don't know the project yet. It, it depends on the private sector because the new fund will finance only private investment and public-private partnership investment. The leverage ratio is very high, especially if you finance small and medium-sized enterprises. So um, there has been some questions why we are using um, such a big number uh, or figure uh, when talking about leverage, but it bases on the historical data of EIB lending. Actually, f times 15 is a little bit lower than ordinary EIB leverage, which has been. So um, nobody can guarantee this, but uh, nevertheless, it's the best uh, information we have at the moment. How quickly does this money get down onto the ground to real people? The real people uh, will see the difference through SME financing already during this spring. So EIB has said that even before the new fund is up and running, they will increase SME lending. SMEs are on the ground and if they can get loans to, uh, to expand their businesses, then we can see more jobs quite quickly. I'd like to get you a few opinions that we got on the investment plan. Let's play it out. We do not yet have a European integrated economic, uh, ele uh, sorry, electric grid. We don't have an integrated telecom grid. Get those things and then not 315 billion, you're going to get 3 trillion. You need the transparency. You need all the structural reform, the regulatory uh, 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 reform, for example, the products reform, for example, the labor market reform, for example, the service sector reforms. And all those things is very important to support this investment plan. That can help, as long as we make sure that this money is spent on projects which will boost growth. Uh, they should not be instead of investments which should be made by countries anyway. So they should really be growth, investment, uh, innovation driven. We are the political moment which is very dangerous for Europe. And if they will do everything for Europe to survive, including changing radically the present policies. I want to pick up on that and ask, how flexible is Europe actually in terms of policies? Flexibility is there when talking about fiscal rules, but there's only few countries who can afford to stimulate the economy. 
But the best, the best stimulus what all the member states can do at the moment is to do reforms that makes it more flexible when talking about labor market or when talking about um, how easy business environment there is. Interconnected markets are very important to this concept. Yeah, exactly. Actually, there are a few areas in, in the EU in which we don't have a real um, harmonized single market. For instance, a digital single market, we don't have one. And this would be very important for SMEs. You can buy easily ties from the other countries, but you cannot buy easily uh, digital content. So that's why we need to harmonize copyright regime. We have to look if we need it more harmonized VAT regime. Um, and data protection laws should be more harmonized. So I believe strongly in this single market part when, uh, when trying to attract investors to invest in Europe. How long will it take for countries to agree to that? Because that's always a stumbling block when yeah, you have it's, 28. It's not easy. It will take some time. But uh, I expect that we have managed to create new digital single market, uh, more harmonized energy market and more harmonized capital market to Europe in three years' time. My final question to you, Mr. Katainen. What keeps you up at night? Deflation? Greece? The lack of growth? The investment plan? Well, uh, let's say investment plan because there are so much work to do it can make a change it will not change whole world it, it will not alone uh, do everything but anyway it will help private investors to invest in europe invest in real uh, job creation projects all over europe mr katainen thank you for your time and thank you for watching